every 10 years in Kenya, there is a national exercise to enumerate Kenyans on how many they are and their living characteristics. Planners cite census results in designing development programs, while politicians wait on the numbers for electoral strategy and sometimes manipulation. So how will the national count that ends next Saturday influence the lives of Kenyans for the next 10 years. Sam Kitoko reports. Many Kenyans may take the census exercise as a means to determine just how many we are and thus may be forgiven to question why that has to be conducted every 10 years, yet deaths and births are registered every day almost as a matter of requirement. But the census and this year's episode in particular appears keen on more than just that. We will be able to find out information, for instance, how many farmers we have, how many teachers we have, all the information that we need about the economy, about the development of the country, so that we are able to plan. The enumerators have been compiling details of Kenyans from their homes, taking note of age, sex, marital status, recent deaths and births, migration and forms of disability. They have also been capturing details of education levels of Kenyans in households, recording their employment and occupation details, agricultural involvement, ICT use in homes, housing conditions and assets owned by families or individuals. This set of data will be critical in informing government and its agencies on the status of the people as well as needs felt by the population. Indeed, the data collected will enable us to measure the social economic status of our nation and to receive the invaluable inputs necessary for charting the roadmap for the next step of our journey to achieving Vision 2030. For resource planning, the data which will eventually be processed and presented based on national total and broken down to specific counties and wards will be critical in national resources sharing. This is especially so in sharing revenue to and among the devolved units. Currently, the Commission on Revenue Allocation shares the equitable share of counties' revenues based on population by up to 45%. The figures in use being from the 2009 census that showed Kenya had 38.6 million people. Even though various estimates put the current population size at at least 45 million and with rural to urban migration on the rise, the figures do not affect the resources sharing. As such, a county like Nairobi City, which geographically would require 38 others to be the size of Isiolo County, received the lion's share of 15.7 billion shillings in the last financial year, compared to Isiolo that got just 3.9 million shillings, mainly due to population size. And yet, based on 2009 statistics, Nairobi had a population of 3.1 million, Isiolo had just over 143,000 people. Different sources estimate Nairobi to have a population of nearly 5 million, if not more. Should census 2019 confirm this, it could raise the city's county share of resources. The Commission on Revenue Allocation has proposed a new formula of resource sharing, a formula that focuses more on financing functions of counties and the services provided by counties. While the new formula moves away from population directly influencing the revenue share, Population size remains critical as the services of health, agriculture and other services will take 45% of resources, again based on population size. The poverty factor impact is proposed to reduce from 18% to 14%, meaning should the formula be approved, the amount poor counties have been receiving may proportionally decline. The new revenue sharing formula will benefit from the census data on economic activities of Kenyans as it will give guidance on crop farming, livestock and aquaculture sectors that are fundamentally under county governments. This is our first opportunity to receive statistics vital to devolution, including those to be utilized to ensure equitable allocation of resources across the 47 counties as well as for delineation of boundaries at constituency and ward levels. The data may also prove critical for the government in planning its Big Four agenda, as well as strategizing on long-term economic development plans like the Vision 2030. But it is the political use of the data that may be louder. Then we also get to know uh, the ethnicity 
of the person. So if you are a Kenyan, we would need to get your 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 your, your, your ethnic grouping. <laughs> Historically, the ethnic card has been a key political mobilizing factor. With family planning programs having taken root among some of the communities, details of population movements will be a matter to observe. Some of the politicians have been rallying Kenyans to get enumerated at their home counties. While this may lead to misrepresentation of where people live, it stands to be used by politicians for political strategizing ahead of future elections. <laughs> ambao wako hapa vihika na wale ambao wanaweza kuja wakuja wahesabiwe nyumbani kuanzia Jumamosi sio lazima mtu asafiri kutoka maeneo moja maeneo moja hadi nyingine mahali ulipo utahesabiwa pale ni kwa sababu kwamba hata na sehemu za kukula nyumbani mahali umetoka kuna watu ambao wa pale ambao sio wa pale watahesabiwa hapo lakini kisha baada ya kuhesabiwa wanarudi maeneo wanamotoka Political strategies may include the boundary delimitation of constituencies and wards that must constitutionally be conducted by 2024. Constituencies that do not meet the population criteria may be matched with others, meaning some of the counties could lose electoral areas should their population proportion reduce. My appeal to Kenyans is wherever they are particularly the political leaders, let's not speculate about the outcome. The outcome depends on the availability. What we need to do is to make sure that, you know, Wherever we need to assist our people to be available for that time. We really want to assure Kenyans that we are going to deliver credible results, authentic results that's going to be used for posterity. A week-long exercise that influenced the country's development and planning trajectory for the next 10 years, more than any other single source of data. What will be crucial though is the sanctity and accuracy of the data for the rightful benefits to accrue to the people and the regions. Sam Gitukusri ZNTV, Nairobi.